All right, hello everyone. Let's talk about the split flap display. So this is an open source DIY project by Mr. David Kay. Not gonna try to say his last name because I believe it um, has some special pronunciation. I'm just gonna say David Kay. Uh, it's available on printables uh, and uh, the code and uh, Gerber info is available on GitHub. I'll link to both. So what is this thing? It is a Wi-Fi connected hobby grade split flap display. This is the kind of thing you'd see uh, back in the day. You would see at an airport or train station, or maybe, you know, maybe your parents, grandparents had that old 70s alarm clock that had the little flaps for the numbers. So there's no great like utility for this project. It's just something fun to build. Um, you can run it as a clock. You can run it, uh, use it to display the date, or you can use it like I'm doing here. Uh, to display a string of characters. Uh, I'm going to change it to date mode while we continue to talk about this thing. Uh, so this thing can be anywhere from 1 to 16 positions wide. Uh, each position has a 45 uh, position drum for uh, letters, numerics, and other punctuations. <clears throat> Uh, the unit is Wi-Fi capable, so it has a ESP01 for Wi-Fi. A little simple UI lets you uh, key in what you want to display on it. And again, you can use it for clock and display date or string characters. I'll change it to a clock now. Um, <clears throat> I love the sound this thing makes. It's awesome. Uh, so. Uh, the one of the parts of this project is printing 3d printing uh so uh you're gonna have uh 10 uh drums inner and outer you're gonna have um 450 flaps for a 10 uh, unit um, display so there's 45 flaps per uh, wheel and there's 10 of those so 450. Um, they're provided in an mmu friendly format uh, which is how i printed them uh, there's also the option to uh, do your own filament swaps. Uh, each flap is only five layers thick, so a filament, filament swap sounds horrible, but it's actually only three filament swaps for each batch. Uh, do recommend going larger on the batches. Uh, that way you can get more done in one batch. Um, I did these on a Bamboo Labs P1P with an AMS unit. Made it super duper easy. Uh, did have a lot of black and white waste, obviously, but that's just part of the game. Uh, the rest of the printed parts are fairly straightforward. I really didn't have any issues with the parts. You just run out all the parts and uh, you'd be ready to get the rest done. Um, I'll talk a little bit later on, but uh, obviously the first thing I want to do is order all the parts for it because that, that has to come first. Um, the only printed part I'm really not happy with is going to be the front, uh, front cover, right? So it has this nice decorative cover that kind of hides the mechanics. Um, unfortunately, the frames and the drums, uh, not so much the drums, but the steppers, the stepper shaft has a lot of play in it. And you're going to have some issues with rubbing against that front cover. At least I did. So I just said, heck with it. And I, I like the sound. I like to see it running anyway, right? So just leaving the front cover off. Um, it also does have a back cover. Uh, it's back behind there. Uh, maybe I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it's pretty simple. It's just a, just a cosmetic back cover. It's got two hangers on the back and it also has a place for uh, a barrel connector and an on off switch. Uh, let's see. So the next thing we want to talk about is uh, what's inside and uh, mechan well, we'll talk about the mechanicals first. Uh, so this thing runs on these little small, um, I don't know what you call these, but they're little geared steppers. They're like the kind of smallest standard size stepper in the hobby community. Um, so uh, these have a pretty high step angle uh, and they're, they're gear, they have gear reduction. Unfortunately, that means they've got a little bit of uh, slack in them, a little bit of uh, lash, uh, but uh, they, you know, they work fine. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, if you're used to 3D printers, you're probably used to a four pin stepper. Uh, these are, um, I can't remember what you call them. They're, they're not bipolar though. There's a, uh, a common positive and then you ground uh, one of, so the positive goes in the middle of the coil and then you ground one direction of the coil or the other direction of the coil. You're only energizing half of the coil at a time. 
kind of weird. But anyway, um, there's there's drivers and everything that go with this. We'll go over that in just a second. Uh, so we have the steppers. And then the other part that's inside each one of the units is a Hall Effect sensor and a magnet. So the drum has a little tiny magnet that's glued inside. And then a Hall Effect sensor to uh, read when that magnet goes past. That's how it homes. That's how it knows at what angle it needs to be for the character you ask. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's that? What else? Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the back. We'll take a look at the back of the unit. If I can swing it around here without breaking anything. Uh, so here's what the back looks like. Now this is where all the goodies are. Uh, so uh, uh, there's a lot to go over here. Uh, so uh, the PCB design is provided by the um, guy who uh, made the project, Mr. David, um, David K. Provide these really nice uh, PCBs and provide the Gerber file for it. So uh, I ordered these. Uh, I just ordered the blank boards. Uh, supposedly you can actually, if you know what you're doing, you can actually upload and do the component selection and actually have some of the components pre-installed. Um, but uh, uh, I'll show you a, a partial completed board. So this is kind of what partial completed board looks like. There are a lot of tiny, let's see if I can get in. There are a lot of tiny components uh, on these boards. Uh, so controlling each drum is an Arduino Nano. So you need something that, um, that can independently home each one of the drums and keep track of where it is to display the right character that you send to it. So you need an MCU on each board. Um, this, this project was put together back in the day before um, the Raspberry Pi 2040s were available. Uh, you know, the Arduino Nano. Arduino Nano used to be like the, you know, the bee's knees for uh, MCUs, right? So that's what this project uses, Arduino Nano. Uh, so we've got the MCU here. And then over on the back is the driver board for uh, the little stepper. So um, it, just, uh, it just has a, a ground pin, a pin that goes to ground going in, and then it switches power. There's a power input, and then there's output to the stepper. That's the stepper. Uh, connector right there. You got a stepper connector there. You've got uh, the connector for the Hall effect. Uh, I've got uh, dip switches. So each board has an ID. It talks over ITC and there's a small uh, dip switch. You can see here on the completed boards. Uh, each board has a independent uh, ID. And uh, the first board, uh, and so here's the ITC, this daisy chain in and out. You can see I damaged this one. Uh, but it has ITC, so this is power ground and your two data lines in and out. They daisy chain, they go down the, get down the line here. Uh, the first board uh, has some additional capacitors, resistors, whatnot, uh, and uh, power regulation for the ESP01. So there's ESP01 unit there. Uh, and uh, that's what provides the Wi-Fi and uh, UI for the unit. Uh, let's see. So, uh, you know, I already mentioned it, but the components are tiny. I mean, there are a bunch of components. I mean, there's there's a couple there. They're uh, 0805 uh, sized. Uh, they they are tiny, and you've got to be able to um, either order these pre-populated, or you need to have a reflow oven. Or you can do like I did and just use very fine motor skills, use a lot of flux, and hand solder them. I, I hand soldered all of these boards. Uh, you obviously need steady hands. You need a good soldering station. And I use magnifiers. I'm a little older and I need, I need help with my visuals. So I use magnifiers. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, the, so power comes in here. Daisy chains down. The ITC daisy chains down. The ESP uh, translates what you want, and then it sends a character to each one of the IDs. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm going to jump into some ticks, uh, tricks, tips, and issues um, I had with building this unit. So the first thing is the sourcing. Um, I recommend getting, uh, or in, in my case, what I did was I ordered the steppers and the Arduinos from China. They're about half the price compared to U.S. pricing uh, if you order those direct. That's a long lead item, it takes about a month to get here. So I ordered those first. 
Um, the uh, electronics, uh, especially the surface mount components, I recommend getting those from wherever your electronics distributor in your country is. Uh, for us uh, in the U.S., it's uh, DigiKey or Mauser, uh, or who I recommend. The reason I recommend getting them from one of those uh, distributors is that they do um, they do cut from a reel, and that's that's typical. They're going to cut it. They're going to cut the items. They're going to be in the piece of the reel. But they're going to put each type of item in its own baggie and label it. So you're going to get this nicely set of labeled bags to do your work. Uh, the rest of the components, uh, such as the Hall Effect sensors, uh, you're going to need um, these uh, JST connectors. You're going to just get all that from Amazon. That's the other skill you're going to need. Obviously, look at all the look at all the JST connectors. You're going to have to saw um, crimp all these connectors. Uh, let me switch this back around. Uh, let's see. We need to go this way, don't we? Let's switch this back around so you can see the front. All right. Uh, let's see. So that talks about the sourcing. Um, buy some extras. That's the other recommendation I have. I had to rework one board, or I had to dispose of one board. It was just too far gone. Um, was able to rework the rest. Uh, that leads me into quality wiring. Uh, man, my, my QC is horrible. I, I had a lot of bad boards that I had to go back look at again, reflow again. I found bugs, errors, going too fast with my soldering. So you, you're going to have that sort of thing to deal with. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you is use quality wiring. Uh, I made the mistake of using, uh, I had a big bin full of DuPont um, uh, hobby, hobby connector things, you know, where you have the little DuPont connectors on the end, ribbon wires. Uh, I don't even have any anymore because I threw them out after I realized what was happening. But they had they were old and they had probably started corroding and the copper breaking in the middle of them had a lot of problems with that. Uh, the other uh, another problem I had was the Hall effect sensors and uh, also the, the putting the magnets in the drum. First thing is these Hall effect sensors. He's going to tell you there's a certain part number to go look for. That's fine. Go look for that part number. But this part number is available. Uh, this part number covers latching and non-latching. So it's just what it sounds like when you pass a magnet over the latching one, the 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 uh, indicator stays on the board. It has a, a little LED indicator and a signal pin out. And they'll stay lit on the latching one. And that's what I got first. I didn't realize it at first. Um, I went ahead and glued all the magnets into the drum based on using these latching sensors. So these were the wrong ones. It also meant that I glued the sensors into or the magnets into the drum the wrong way. The polarity does matter. So uh, I had to take these Hall Effect sensors, bend the sensor around the other way. Um, that introduced uh, differences in how they home. So then that causes me problems. Um, the unit works fine now, but it does take when it homes, it has to go, the drum has to go around an extra time because the position is not where the designer uh, intends it for it to be. I love how it uh, flips over the clock. That's so cool. Um, let's see. Uh, so, you know, we talked about the, the, the QA, you have to be able to QA and troubleshoot your boards, uh, find out whether the Hall effect sensor and its harness are working. Um, maybe the, uh, stepper may not be pulsing and moving correctly. And you may find that your surface mount, um, stepper chip has a bridge between two pins or uh, maybe your uh, the soldering from the nano to the board may have a bridge. So you have to go back and you have to go find all those problems. I was able to find all of my problems uh, except for one board that was just, uh, I had, uh, I can't even remember. I think I had a bad nano. Uh, I actually had a nano that was overheating. Uh, so uh, I had to re I had to throw away one board, but I got 10 more uh, done okay. Uh, the... Um, I think I already talked about batching up the MMU prints. I had that in my notes. Um, put as large a batch on your plate as you can because that is um, your overhead of filament swaps or your waste for filament swaps is based on the batch. So make your batches as large as possible. It's a lot of those flaps. That's a big part of the project. Um, uh, and, you know, other than that, uh, I would say just uh, just kind of know what the process is and you'll, you'll figure this out pretty quick. But uh, the way this the way the assembly worked, the way the progress worked, uh, I ordered all the parts, got all the lonely parts ordered, got the PCBs ordered. Then I printed all of the pieces. So all the, all the pieces um, really 
really, really important to be well, um, well organized. So my kids eat a lot of these yogurts. So this is the organization unit I use in my shop, but, uh, just wash these out instead of recycling, you know, the, the R before recycling is reuse, right? So I'm reusing. Uh, so you need to be organized. You need to have a way to organize all your stuff. Um, there are jigs for assembling the flaps, uh, available in printables as a remix. Recommend these for sure. There's also containers for your flaps if you want to organize and uh, sort your flaps before assembling them. Uh, but back to the assembly on this. Once, uh, so uh, getting all the stuff ordered, printing all the parts, assembling the drums is the next thing. So there's a 45 flaps that go on each drum. You've got to assemble all of that, get the magnet in the drum. Uh, and then comes the final assembly part. So uh, this decoding for this is uh, Arduino. Uh, so you, you're using uh, the Arduino software uh, 1.8. You have to use Arduino 1.8. Again, this project's a little older, but you'll have to go back and get 1.8 for the ESP file system. And then the rest of this, this is all uh, programmed uh, by serial cable. And then uh, this, this is uh, the programmer for the ESP. Uh, so you'll start assembling these units and I recommend you start with just a single unit device, right? So you program your ESP for one unit only and you assemble your unit. You want to make sure that the unit homes, there's an LED light on the Hall Effect that will help you. It'll, it'll, as it, as it spins, it will trigger and you'll see the light. So that's your troubleshooting. Uh, if it homes, uh, it will home. Um, so you have to make sure that it homes. That's what you have to do on each of these units is make sure that they independently home. And there is a offset for the home position and you'll need to play with the offset with the slight rotation of the drum one way or another. You get the home position uh, reliable. Once you do that, then you can add on units and add these daisy chain cables. And then each unit that you add, you um, tell your ESP that you're adding units. You up the number of units on your ESP and then you go through and build. So uh, I went through a final assembly phase of a week, week and a half. So I started with one. I got the first three or four together and then I started adding a couple uh, every evening. So it takes me between 30 minutes and an hour for each unit altogether. That includes rework, QC, um, and then uh, adding it uh, to the unit. Um, I, I, I honestly, I think that's it. Uh, this video has gone pretty, pretty long. Uh, I love this thing. It's, it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's retro. It has this, has this nice uh, kinem kinematic noise. I mean, yeah. Um, here, I'll, uh, I'll have it. I'll have it a uh, key over one more time. I think if I can, uh, if I can get it to uh, flip over one more time. Well, of course, it's going to make me look bad, right? So let's go back to oh, let's go to text mode. There we go. The web UI is not the greatest. Uh, so yeah, love this thing. Um, I guess on a final closing note about this project, if you're first off, you're still here. Thanks. Um, this, these, I know the videos on my channel are kind of random. I don't have like a, a set thing that I, I throw onto my channel. I just, uh, video some of my projects and put them on there. Um, the last thing I would say about this project though, is that Mr. David K and I did have, I did message him uh, a few times. Um, he is satisfied with what this project does and he is not, uh, making ongoing improvements. So, uh, I would say you need to be okay with the project as is, or you need to dust off your coding skills and, uh, be able to, uh, have it do more. Uh, this project as is, is, uh, uh, is able to do 16 characters. Um, you can add additional dip switches for more characters though. So it's pretty flexible. Uh, anyway, uh, this has run, uh, this has run really long and, uh, I don't do editing on my videos. So, uh, I need to go ahead and cut this, uh, short. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this useful. Thanks.